Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can tell, I am inside the house on the couch because I can't talk outside because it's so bloody windy. I'm always competing with the wind as you guys know, but today I'm home alone so I can record inside for you guys. So, as you guys can tell, there is something important happening uh, in my life and I guess with the channel too. Some of you guys may remember in some of my older videos, I've been talking about leaving where I am now in Australia, leaving Australia and moving overseas and where I wanted to go was America. But some of you guys may know that it is very difficult to move anywhere in the world. Uh, America is no exception. And some of you guys may also remember I was finding it very difficult to get a visa so I could even go and live there and whatnot. You know, I can always go temporarily, but why would I want to go somewhere temporarily than have to move again? That's what I've done here in Australia. I came to Australia uh, with a previous partner of mine and then she left me. Uh, so yeah, I kind of was like, all right, try to finish off, try to get residency here, but things changed. I realized some things in life. And basically to conclude it all, I am moving uh, to England. So I have residency in England and I'm gonna go move back there and then I will travel Europe because I am a European citizen. So I'll travel Europe and see where in Europe I like and go from there really. Figure out where I like, um, where I can envisage myself living, uh, growing the plants. Obviously that's one of the most important things for me, growing the plants. And of course, I'm bringing you guys with me on that, on that adventure. Uh, that means that when I'm moving overseas and whatnot, when I'm exploring Europe, I might not be doing many videos, but up until the time that I leave, which is the 20th of February, I will still be making videos like I can normally do. However, the collection may get less and less because I am, like I've been telling you guys, I am selling the plants. I am selling Venus flower traps uh, and different sun juice, Drosera capensis, Drosera alba, capensis alba, um, some Alicias, some Natalensis, and that Nepenthes that I have out there is a Nepenthes alata. It's pretty big. If anyone wants it and you live in Australia, I am selling that too. And the big table we have outside. And there are a couple other things that I'm selling. Let me show them to you guys really quick. So like I said, it is very windy and this machine makes a lot of noise, which is why I don't record over here. But anyway, guys, I'm also selling this peat moss. It's 220 liters, $80 for that. I need to get rid of it. I can't take it with me to England, obviously. I also have perlite inside, 100 liters for $45. And then vermiculite, 100 liters for $40. And I have like half a bale of, um, like a pretty much full bale of sphagnum moss, which is very, very like rare at the moment. There's a sphagnum moss shortage, which I need to get rid of too. So if someone wants that, let me know about that too. Otherwise I have no idea what I'm gonna do. But this is the Nepenthes I was telling you guys about. Some of you guys may rem remember we got it and it was, uh, I guess as big as this basil that it now has, like that size. Now it has two basils and a long vine. And this is its friend here, which hasn't done much. But yeah, I need to sell that one too, guys. But anyway, let me talk a little bit more about our move overseas. And then I'll update you guys on our plants that we sprayed with insecticides. So make sure you stick around for that. Let's go back inside. So yeah, guys, as I mentioned to you, I do need to sell those things and I'm offering it to you guys because I know how difficult it is to get that stuff and it's pretty good prices. Um, but aside from all of that stuff, uh, we are moving to England, like I mentioned. And the biggest reason for this is because I want to follow my passion of growing these plants. And unfortunately, here in Australia, you can't really import plants like you can, but like I've said before in previous videos, it's very, very expensive and very, very difficult. I've contacted a couple of people who have actually imported plants into Australia before. Like this one guy, um, Cooper Brett, I think something like that on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, go check it out. It's one of my newer posts as of, you know, this video. And he's imported many, many different types of Venus flytrap cultivars and he popped out out of nowhere and you know told me about um, all his plants that he has and sent me a picture for me to share with you guys. And 
um, go to his profile and I looked at him like, how the hell do you have so many of these like rare carnivorous plants? Like in Australia, out of all places. Um, he has like just a, an amazing amount of Venus flytrap cultivars, but real cultivars. If you're in Australia and you think you have a B52 and you got it from like Triffid Nurseries, you don't actually have a B52. It, it's, you know, I don't want to, slander the name or anything like that at all that's not what what my intention is at all but when i got my b52 from them it wasn't a real b52 it's not red it doesn't have the exterior red streak it's just all green so you know it's, it's very for me it was disappointing but he has like the proper b52 from america he imported from california carnivores <clears throat> anyway so i asked him how the hell did you do this and he told me, you know, like you imported through the Australian rules and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'll know back on and stuff, but how much did this cost you? And like, what process did you go through? And he listed the process, which is given to you on the back on website. And he said to bring in eight plants, which were tissue culture plants, because to bring a, like actual plants into Australia is even more difficult. So to bring in tissue culture plants cost him $2,000 for eight plants. Imagine spending $2,000 on eight plants, right? And this was before, you know, the rules became more difficult. Um, they, the company you import tissue culture plants through have to be a, a, like Australian accredited. So it makes it very difficult. It makes it much more difficult. And that's what he's currently going through now. He's getting European companies accredited with the Australian government so he can import some of their plants. Like it's a huge, it's a huge, huge endeavor. Um, but for him, he's an Australian resident, right? So for him, I guess it makes more sense. I'm not even a resident here. So to stay here in Australia is very tough, difficult, expensive. $70,000 to stay in Australia. I've already spent 20 something thousand dollars um, just to be in Australia for the past three years. So for me, it doesn't make much sense to stay here. It makes more sense to go overseas, um, be with my family in England um, and you know, grow the plants in Europe and try and supply them to the the rest of the world like other european sellers do right so that's that's that but yeah it is possible if there's a world there's a way this possible it will cost you and if you want to bring in like actual plants like let's say there aren't some plants that aren't tissue cultured like some nepenthes for example they're not tissue cultured right you have to buy the actual plant themselves and like helium fours and stuff you have to get the actual plants so if you want to do that you have to import and then go through quarantine and it's a three-month quarantine they have to be fumigated with mercury um and then obviously they have to go to a quarantine facility and this is like a government quarantine facility. Do you really think like someone earning minimum wage is gonna care about your plants as much as we will care about our plants? No way, this thing's just been fumigated, it's had a trip from wherever overseas. It's like on its deathbed and here you put mercury on it and then some random, like someone who doesn't really know too much about your specific plant is gonna look after them at their quarantine facility. Your plant's gonna die, my man. It's gonna die. Unfortunately, it will die. So yeah, it's very, very sad, but you know, if you really want to do it and you have the money and you have you know, months just to wait around for your plant, you know, it, it is possible. But in my instance, it isn't. And yeah, so just another thing before I forget, the hydrofoggers, you guys know me ha that I have, I'm selling them for $700 each. They usually go for $900. Uh, the greenhouse heats I'm selling for 200, they go be for between 300 and 500. And I have solenoids that switch on and off misting systems. You guys have seen these in my old videos. I'm selling those for $80 each. They usually go for $100 to $150 plus. So yeah, I just, all I want to do is just sell them and just get some of the money that I spent on them back. I'm not trying to um, make a profit on them or anything like that, guys. So if you're interested in Australia, let me know. But otherwise, I, I don't know how I'm going to take those things with me overseas because like, if I could, I would. But it could only take one 25 kilo bag. So... The airline that I'm flying with, $365 for five kilos, like extra weight. $365 if you want to add five kilos onto your weight. So one extra bag costs you $2,000 plus for one extra bag. So that is why I have to sell those hydrofoggers and stuff, guys. It's, not, it's just not feasible, unfortunately. I have my computer that I need to take with me. That thing weighs 20 kilos. I've looked at Eurocent to see how much um, they'll charge me, like 137 euros. That's fine. As long as I know that you will not destroy my computer. If they are a reputable company, I'm happy to pay that money because it's, it's my computer, it's how I make my money. I'm a software developer, so I need that computer. Um, but man, like, 
if I don't want to pay you, your company to destroy my stuff, right? No, nah, that's not going to happen. So if you guys know any computer transportation services like, like you send, like I've Googled, let me know, please. And if you want any of those appliances, please let me know. I want to sell them so that I don't have to worry about taking that heavy stuff with me overseas. And obviously it's rare to get in Australia. Hydrofoggers, you don't really get them around Australia. I'd like to import them, they're very heavy. So yeah. Oh, I guess that's all of that. I'm very excited to actually get to Europe, to get to England. You know, the plants we can get, guys. We can get some rare plants. We can hopefully buy some land one day. And we can start doing this hobby properly. I won't be studying here in Australia. So, yeah, it will be, it'll be different. It will be different. It will be more difficult again, moving continents again. But, yeah, anyway, guys, 20th of February, that's the day. And let me go show you the plants outside. They are looking really good, even though I've never used that insecticide before. It's been a week. But yeah, let me show you real quick. So like I told you guys, it is windy, it is noisy, but I can't control mother nature. This is not an insect problem, but this is a bird problem. We have a wild turkey that's destroying our Drosa regii. You guys can see it's been bitten off and attacked, all the growth there. So there's a wild turkey that jumps over the fence here. Boink. And then it, it just loves the regii for whatever reason. So yeah, guys, when we move to England or wherever, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be building a temperate greenhouse so that we can have our plants protected from the wind and stuff. We'll have tables like this, but yeah, this table, like I said, I'm selling this table. If you guys want this table? It's double level, double level with this pond liner, like three mil thick or something. Very, very strong with this. The other levels inside, but yeah, guys, here's the plants. And they're all, honestly, they look normal. They look exactly the same. Our tuberous sun juice here are all going dormant now because it is going into springtime sometime soon. And our Saracenia flava hasn't been attacked by any bugs just yet. So we might have our very first... Oh, this isn't, isn't a flava, sorry. It's the Luco hybrid, but we might have our very first pictures of the season from this plant. Very first pictures from this plant too. So quite excited for that guys but yeah like I said the plants are very happy they didn't lose their dew they haven't regressed they haven't died you know they honestly very happy and as far as I can see the aphids are gone so yeah guys I do now recommend that um, products a little bit more than what I did but it's only been one week so we'll give it a bit more time so make sure that you stay on the channel make sure you subscribe to see if anything changes with that product but for now hey i mean the plants are fine and there's no more aphids which is perfect so yeah guys that's um the interesting update video uh an update on, on my life not so much the plants but yeah i have heaps of stuff that i need to get rid of again don't know if anyone wants these things gray crates that i used to hold water in like 15 dollars each or something i don't know guys i'm just gonna get rid of my stuff I can't take this with me to england and i can't leave it here so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i hope uh you guys found it interesting like found my boring life interesting me moving continents again and the stuff you do for these damn plants guys but yeah i am also moving houses again today so, I'll see you guys in the next one.